Yo, peace, everybody. Real quick uh, update on what's been going on, on down on our end. You know, a lot of you had found out that uh, the bank was trying to repo Charlie's RV, and we found out about that as well. And that's his home and someone who's, you know, done a lot for us. So we were able to stop that from happening and uh, paying off his debts by donating him all the money that we made uh, in June from our Patreon. So it's really amazing for us to be able to use this platform for stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people in our scene don't really get help like that. So it's we don't take it lightly and we really appreciate the the ability to do that and it wouldn't have been possible without everybody who signed up um now the month that's coming up we're going to be doing something for a uh, hurt one bf crew i'm sure a lot of you have heard of him and his situation seeing as it happened a while ago and it's still currently going down uh his home was raided in 2008 he was sentenced to jail in 2010 and been on parole since which is makes it 11 years and the reason he's still on parole is because he owes $60,000 in restitution. Uh, but he's been, you know, slowly paying that off. Um, and we're going to be donating all of the money we make to him uh, at the end of July. So some of the stuff that happened to him through getting caught up writing graffiti was uh, he couldn't own any art making material legally. So they stopped him from owning chalk, markers, pencils, paint, uh, canvases. And this is someone who's in, you know, he does art um even just outside of graph so that's a uh, you know and then he couldn't own a cell phone couldn't drive a car couldn't leave the county uh couldn't be anywhere not contactable by landline phone uh still can't leave the county so he's he's getting closer to paying off the restitution and finding finally ending this 11 years of parole so our plan is to finish that off um just like we were able to save charlie's home successfully our plan is to stop this uh parole thing from going down and just finish it off and then that's a thing of the past you know what i mean so uh that's what we're going to be doing with all of the money we make in july for everybody who signs up for the patreon what you'll get in return is uh access to sake uh sean crawford less and lot 29 episodes they're all up right now and um as well we're going to be sending everyone a print that we made on high quality photo paper of uh hurts day in court and it's uh him with uh two officers by his side and it has his hand style under it so trying to make it worth it to sign up and help this guy out and uh, help us help this guy out so i can't once again thank you enough for everyone who's been supporting since the start and everyone who's uh signed up for anything we've done or even listened to an episode uh, hopefully we can keep this going and just continue, uh, you know, helping out people who we think deserve the help. So the link to the Patreon is in our Instagram bio and it's also on our website. Yo, thank you so much. Enjoy the episode. Peace. We got bat in the motherfucking house. What the fuck is up, bro? Not much. Just happy to be out here. Yeah, we're happy thanks you for came. Having me. Dude, we're happy you came. So yeah, um, thanks for coming out, man, for sure. I guess I'll start it off. Just how how long you been writing for? Uh, I've been like I've been writing since about 1997. I had like a my first solid name that I wrote. I wrote probably probably from 1995, but just on and off, nothing serious. And then got like in my first crew and whatever else in '97, and been doing it since then. You've always been on this type of aesthetic. No, I. Uh, I don't know, I learned backwards. The people who I painted with were more into like color and burners and things like that. And they didn't really think tagging and, and bombing was, you know, very creative or whatever. So the speed that we were on was like, you had to have this fucking 15 color burner if you wanted to be the man, you know, whatever. And, and there was this great competition for that. So instead of really practicing tagging and, and learning like a fucking fill and whatever, we were practicing technical styles and I always drew characters. So I was like the guy who did like characters in the production and I did my name too, but I was always happier doing a character in the production. So yeah, a lot of people know you cause you're rollers, man. You fucking took the city by storm with that shit. Like, what do you have to say about that, man? Like, I, I don't feel like my rollers compare anything to like the gain in Texas, uh, or, uh, some of the other, you know, like Merck and these other guys, like, my, maybe my thing is just different, so it stands yeah, out. Yeah, it definitely in, in stands its own out. Way, but yeah. I mean, not to you know jock, but 
I don't think that America's got anything more original to offer the graffiti world other than the game in Texas Philly hand rollers. Like that's the most innovative thing I've seen. Yeah, you guys in, in, in like my lifetime probably. Yeah, those things are next level, man. You guys are definitely, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's opening the eyes I think for a lot of writers to think, wow, like those are the standards. I have to step my game up. You know what I mean? And I think that's really uh, good for graffiti, honestly. I, I think it just got to the point where I was walking around all night and I'm looking around going like, I did this, I did this, I did this, this got buffed, this ran. I'm seeing the same people painting the same spots over and over, even though they got buffed. I'm like, where, like, what's going to run? Like, and then, you know, you look up and everything up seems to be running, you know? And, and so what's nobody doing? Nobody's doing rollers right on the sidewalk. Well, let's roll the dice and see how that turns out. And so sure enough, you know, some of the rollers on the sidewalk are running, some got buffed, some of the roofs are there, so. That's actually something I wanted to ask you. Do you have a lookout? Because I noticed that, yo, when all your roller spots, it's pretty much just you up, and I don't really see you painting with that many people, so do you just have, do you have no lookout? I just paint by myself. I just, I have my routine that I do. There's like a way that I operate, and uh, I mean, it's nothing personal to like a lot of people, but I just don't, I don't fuck with anybody. Like, I'm on my own wavelength, and you know, there's, People have their feelings about me too. You know, maybe they don't like me or maybe they do like me, but I'm just all business when I'm out here. You know, I, I'm not here to fuck around. I'm not here to fucking, uh, you know, drawing books and things like that. Like much respect to everybody who asks, you know, I'll get around to it, but there's shit I need to do. I always have a plan. And if it's not part of my plan, then I'm, I'm not gonna make that happen. How long do you plan on these spots before you go and do them? For example, the Gramercy, the theater? Oh, okay, yeah. You just pop up on it and then like that night you see it during the daytime that night you do it or how's it work i was actually on my way to meet up with rebo for the all we got is us video filming and saw it on my way over and suggested it but it was just kind of out of the way from where we were and i basically put it out of my mind for the evening and then on my way back to where i was going i passed back by it and looked and was like I, I gotta get this. Like, if I don't get this, somebody's gonna get it. Like, I need to get this. I need to take the whole thing. So that that basically was just like, I knew how to get up there. I had cased how to get up there. Super easy. And I and the fucking street was pitch black. I, it was like super fucking late. So it was it was not a chore at all. It was one of the easier spots that I've that I've done. You just went alone. Yeah, that's it. But you didn't really you didn't really plan it out. No, it was just, I mean, I had the paint, so it was just kind of, I, I guess once I got up there, I had i had originally thought to maybe do like my whole name, like doing the letters and whatever, but the way that the layout of it was up there was more like, I don't know, maybe this just deserves like a giant bat, you know, maybe that's like, they'll be like my theater basically was kind of like, oh, when you come here, like you're coming to see whatever it says on there, but really you're coming to see this fucking giant bat, so that was... That was basically the idea. That's crazy. And painting like that, you don't, how often you get chased? I've been chased quite a bit. I've been, I've been uh, taken in once, luckily, you know, knock wood. But uh, the other times I've, I've ran for it and uh, I did some, you know, I've done what I had to do. Carnage posted uh, the interview about All We Got Is Us, and you were talking about the Manhattan Bridge spot, where you, yeah. yo, that shit was crazy, man. You did fucking like 200 bats back to back to back to back. Those are all still there. I noticed that yeah. other people kind of caught on to it and, and jumped in there, and uh, that's cool. You know, there's plenty of room for everybody. But uh, I don't know. Again, like just the bridges for me, like I'm walking around, I'm like, yeah, you know, plenty of buildings. But people travel those bridges a lot. There's yeah, yeah. a lot of traffic on those yeah. bridges. And whether it's looking at the rooftops that are, you know, off to the sides or actually on the bridge, if there's open realty and nobody's gotten that throughout the history of the fucking bridge being there. Yeah. And the thing is, I feel like when people take um, a certain route every day for work or whatever, they notice every fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like, there could be a little creep spot. And especially if someone takes it every day and they look out the window every day, every day, they might think, like, wow, that's a good spot, but nobody's doing it. So, like, you creeping in those little pillars, I'm sure so many people notice that, you know, like, thinking outside the box. That know? shit was that shit was a fucking trip, too, because uh, in the middle, once I got to, like, the middle of the bridge, you know, if you fall, you're, you're going into the fucking ocean right there. <laughs> And at one point I'm, I'm filling in and I see like a fucking light from under me flashing up. I'm like, what the fuck would that be? Yeah. Like a UFO, what the fuck is this? 
And sure enough, it's like the Harbor Patrol is down no there, and way. I had I had dropped a can, and I I think they were like, oh shit, it's someone like jumping something off fell. the bridge. Yeah, yeah they they were like fucking looking for a body in the water. So I had to chill out for a minute. I was like, oh fuck, are they gonna come up here? Or like, uh, am I about to get rushed? And sure enough, it, it once just, again, you were alone. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's crazy. Absolutely, I'm just trucking a massive amount of paint with me. I, I can't I can't remember how much paint I used, but it was. It was a lot. That was probably one of the only nights I think I said in the interview where I was like, I have painted enough. Like, this is, I just, it's time to go. <laughs> I'm fucking done. Dude, I can only imagine um, doing such things alone. It kind of, what do you feel like? It uh, elevates your mental, like you get to know yourself better, like in those spots, like. It's more like, it's one thing to like trust your, your homie who's like a good lookout and then you don't have to worry, but. Like, I'm my best lookout. Like, any noise, yeah. that's not me. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, means yeah. something's happening. Everything's right? on you. If something goes down, you know how to handle yourself. You don't have to look out for nobody else, right? Bottom line, like, my phone isn't on. Nothing. Any noises I hear, any any sound, something's going it's on. It's outside of yourself. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. And, you know, there's, it could be nothing or it could be a fucking cop. And there's been plenty of times where I was not being a good lookout for myself. And the cops rolled right up on me. And they just, for some reason, didn't notice me. Or the, they might not have just, they probably just didn't believe I was really doing what I was doing. Yeah. And so. As if you were with, like, three other people standing on a corner, like, look, you know what I mean? Yeah. Again, it's, it's kind of like maybe the cops have this idea of what someone who's bombing is supposed to yeah, look yeah. like. And they have, like, a routine of the kind of shit they, they catch people doing. Of the vibe they get from, exactly. like, a group of people. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if anything, like, if a cop looks at me and then looks away... I don't look like what he's looking for. You know what I mean? I can only imagine doing those rollers. Um, you, I feel like if I were to do them personally, I would feel like I would ha I'm, I'm supposed to be in that spot. Like I'm supposed to be doing this wall. That's what I would have to say to myself to, you know what I mean? Be chill with it. Yeah. No, there's definitely, I'm not going to divulge how I pull it off, yeah, but yeah. there's, there's a method to the madness. And it, it basically goes from like, you know, Oh, this is nothing to wait a minute how that's a giant bat like what the fuck and whoever gets to see the oh fuck that's a giant bat there was the the one i did on um i don't know it's on the lower east side in that big yard there's a game in texas across from it and like a little adzy and view and chupa or whatever i don't know the name of the it's rivington uh, rivington is that what it? yeah yeah but that one i was i wasn't done and there was a crew of kids walking by and I hear them going, oh, fuck, that got chased. Like, he didn't finish. But they just didn't look through the fence to see me. I was standing right there. And then I hear them talking shit like, yeah, I fuck with them, but I don't really I don't really tell nobody that I fuck with them. You know what I mean? Like, people shit. don't like them or whatever. I'm it just sounds like, it sounds like a movie clip. It was pretty <laughs> funny, though. It was like, I was like, oh, so that's the fucking feeling right there. Like, I like them, but I just don't tell nobody I like them, you know? So it was, it was interesting. It's crazy. So what do you think about cops? Especially hate, with everything going down right now. I fucking hate the police. I've always hated the police fucking from watching my father get arrested when I was a child to dealing with them as a fucking, you know, human being on my own. I mean, a little known fact, and I probably, sh I probably shouldn't say this, but I will say that I, I was in jail as like a kid when my mother died. And I had a fucking coroner, a cop, and a probation officer come to me pull me into a fucking another cell, tell me my mother died, and basically, like, laugh in my face about it, you know what I mean? And then let me know that, you know, their feelings about how she died, which I won't get into, and then, uh, you know, basically push me back into a cell. I went to my mother's funeral in shackles. Luckily, I got to fucking go. I went to a, I went to a funeral. Uh, I, was a, I was just a kid, very young. And uh, that, that really fucking, like... That just really left a fucking extra nasty taste in my mouth. So ever, ever since that, you know, it's just been really, really fuck the cops. Uh, my boy Ola almost went to prison for bear macing a fucking cop. So, you know, we, it's, I fucking hate him even more now. Like, I hate to use the word hate, but it, there's only one way to describe it. Like, I fucking hate every cop. Your cousin isn't cool. Your uncle isn't cool. Your dad or your brother, whoever, your sister, if they're a cop, they, they take people's freedom for a fucking living. You know, you have to be a miserable piece of shit to fucking do that as a job. And, you know, also if you fucking murder people because of the color of their fucking skin, because you can get away with it. I feel like they should just let fucking these people's families just fucking beat them in the street to death. Yo, I say that honestly often how 
at the end of the day, we're all fucking humans here. And, like, for one human to have some type of power, authority, a gun, that's just straight fucking wrong. If you really look at it from a, a bigger picture, you take away the, the whole government, the whole official, the whole profession, quote unquote, like, that's just another human being. Like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Like, what, how does he have the right to control how I live in this fucking one life I have, you know? Uh, that's that's so if they can fuck. steal your freedom, that's one thing. But to actually, like, murder you just because they have this authority, like, that, that obviously. Things and get have been away out of control it? since Jump Street. And like, get away get, with it. Yeah. That shit's fucked. You know, we all don't get to deal with that. Like, some of us might make it through life without ever having a cop fucking beat the shit out of you or whatever else. But when it does happen to you, it's like the most powerless feeling you'll ever fucking have being like locked in a room with a cop who could just use you as a fucking pinata. And it's your word against his. All he's got to do is say, you, you fucking swung at him or some shit. You, you, know s- I mean? you see these videos. They speak for themselves. Like um, a cop can slap a guy around and your natural instinct is defend yourself. But as soon as you put your hand up, you're going to fucking jail for uh, quote unquote assaulting an officer. If you don't like, get shot or whatever no, the fuck it's crazy. else. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the world we live in nowadays is... It, what do you think is the solution? I, don't, I mean... If there, if there even is one. Like this neighborhood, for instance, you know, I don't know anything about this fucking neighborhood, but I'm sure there are good people and bad people in this neighborhood. And maybe it takes, you know, some of the good people to be like, hey, this is how we want this neighborhood run. If you want to fuck around here, well, this is what's going to happen. You know what I mean? We're, maybe they have jail for a reason. Maybe, you know, if you're a fucking rapist or a child fucking molester or you know, p- possible, you know, if you murder someone for a really shitty fucking reason, then maybe you belong in a fucking cage, you know what I mean? But aside from that, like, drugs and shit, like, this, these things can be fixed. Stealing, like, you can always repay someone, you know, all these other things, there's a way to fix it. And I think every neighborhood should just have its own little, you know, committee or whatever. Something maybe. more local. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, to hey, get to really know people. Yeah. So it would be what, a, a pretty much a... You can call it something else, but would it be a police force just for a locally for that neighborhood? I, I mean, I guess I wouldn't even. I think that that word is just. Well, we can call it something. Right, else, right, but exactly. They're, but they're essentially, yeah, for, yeah. For people doing whether whatever. it be neighborhood watch or whatever the fuck you want to call it, you know. What I mean, if if that's what you really need to do in your neighborhood to fucking feel safe, then I guess go for it. But at the same time, like you shouldn't have the authority to fucking steal people's freedom and shit like that. Make them pay money. Make them whatever. Yeah, you got to learn your lesson the fucking hard way. We all know, like. Yeah, or that's the other thing too is like being a cop make it harder to become a cop yeah fuck that like sh- what's what's the fucking uh, criteria it's to like become a fucking months. cop I'm not sure but I think it's like under a year I'm training a fucking yeah. sociopath with a fucking yeah. you know a racist sociopath with yeah. a fucking that's gun, another thing you know I mean? they should have like monthly psyche evaluations and shit like that you know really know what's going on in these people's lives cause they might be really fucked up and they're out here controlling people that's not that's not good you, you know it's uh the system is has some kind of error when the hardest part about becoming a cop is the wait list. That should not be the hardest part. It's literally the wait list. It's how many people are in line before you. So it makes it a little bit harder, but the qualifications in and of themselves are, I don't know what they are, but I know they're nothing extraordinary. Dude, I seen some posts on uh, Instagram or something. How in, I think it was in Minnesota there. They put a uh, local PD put up a post in the, in the, in the paragraph. They were like, if you want, just sign up and you'll be a cop the next day. Fuck that, man. Just because they need people. Like, no have, no, they, no checks, no nothing. That shit's fucking... It's out of control. I remember being a kid and my dad, like, explaining to me about, like, what a rat was and that you never want to be a rat. And then, I, then he explained to me, like, the police have their own view on that. Like, they don't rat on one another. So when you fucking rat, they're like, oh, well, this guy's a piece of shit. You're giving me money for whatever, but... They would certainly never trust you. And to think about that, like, these guys run their own program like a it's fucking... the biggest little, gang in the world. Yeah, like a gang. Yeah. They're like their own mob, you yeah. know? And, and they back one another up on the shittiest moves and whatever else. And, and like, what? Crooked cops and all that. Like, is there such thing as a cop that isn't crooked? Like, who the fuck are they? And, and really, like... Eventually, they're gonna do something shitty. If you take someone's freedom, I think you're a piece of shit. Like that's yeah. and they're back. They're backed up by the most powerful thing there is, which is the fucking government. You know? Yeah, I, honestly, like I think you should be able to kill at least one cop in your lifetime. 
I thought you were going to say, I think you should be able to kill at least one person in your lifetime. I think, I think one person, you'd have to have a really good reason, but a cop, like, you should just, like, if this guy is really, like, a fucking piece of shit, like, if they just get to kill random citizens and get away with it, then how come random citizens can't kill them and get away with it? Like, maybe, like, every 17th baby that's born gets a fucking card that comes with his birth that says, okay, you're the guy who gets to kill a cop in your lifetime or whatever. Something like that. Just to even out that the playing for president. field. Yeah, that for like, dictator. Every seventeenth baby. I don't know, that was a random number, but you get what I'm saying. Like, so what do you think the state of America is at right now with everything it's, going into shambles? It's just a mess, bro. COVID nineteen and fucking. Like I said, I'm a, I'm an essential worker outside of you know doing what I do, and people are just fucking. I don't. I wouldn't even call people animals. They're they're fucking monsters, man. They they just treat one another like shit. They're they're out for self on like a, I wouldn't even call it like a zombie level because zombies are kind of selfless and uh, these people are purposely spiting one another whether it's driving or shopping or fucking walking down the block like actually a few weeks ago when I was out here I I watched some fucking older white guy there was a couple you know African American kids on bicycles and you know they cut him off and he whatever he said to him. The kid couldn't have been more than 16 and got off and slapped this older man in his face. And when, uh, the look on the old du white dude's face when he got slapped was like, why did you do that? Like, what the fuck did you say to him? People don't just slap one another. You know, this kid wouldn't have gotten off his bike going fucking however fast he was if you didn't say what you said. And, and he was, you know, you could tell he was like physically fucking rattled like this man had never been slapped yeah, in his yeah. life. Yeah. And I'm fucking applauding. I'm just like, yeah. yes, you fucking <laughs> slapped this dude. Like, fuck. I watched this dude shake his little fucking ass back to his apartment. And I was like, that was one of the most liberating experiences I've ever fucking seen in my life. Where this guy thought he could just say whatever he wanted. And like, that's America now. Like, oh, freedom of speech. I'm just going to blurt out some racist bullshit. And you guys got to deal with it. Fuck no, you're going to do... Someone's going to fucking hit you if you do that shit. And you deserve it. You fucking deserve to be hit. Knock some sense into this motherfucker, you know? Yeah, if these events taught us anything, I feel... If you just give people an excuse, they'll take advantage you know what I mean? I, I personally don't wear a mask anywhere I fucking go. And I just feel the judgment, you know, like just because you watch the news, you know what I mean? I, what if I have a different viewpoint on this? I don't have the right to feel this way. Like, you know what I mean? What, what I makes that, you so right? I think that uh, everyone has the right. Yeah. There's no rights, but everyone can do what they want. But that means that we can also do what we want. Like um, we can also re react to people's to people doing what they want. So you can not wear a mask, but it's also in people's right to be like, what the hell is your problem? You know what I mean? Because it's just people doing what they want at the end of the day. Yeah. Who can stop anyone from doing anything? I mean, we're all breathing the same fucking air, dude. If you're not walking up to people and coughing on them and shit, then it's not a problem. You know what I mean? Or, or like, again, free country, you know, whatever you want to if don't bother me, I know I won't bother you. If you cough on me or some shit, then I'm going to be like, okay, well, I guess I got coronavirus now. What the fuck? <laughs> I'll deal with it. <laughs> you know, exactly. Like, How'd you feel about it when it all came up on the news? Uh, at first, I kind of didn't believe the hype. And then all of a sudden, like, everybody's panicking. And I'm fucking buying, like, bulletproof vests. And fucking, <laughs> I got, like, a goddamn war outfit at my fucking yeah. house. I got, like, a crazy gas mask. All this shit. Yo, you wouldn't be wrong either. Uh, and, and then now, now it's just sitting in my closet. I'm just like, <laughs> just wait for the next one. Yeah, I, it's just a matter of time. Ready don't for worry, war man. whenever, I guess. I, I don't fucking know. If these events showed anything. It shows that you don't know what's gonna happen in the future, man. <laughs> my girlfriend's like, I want a fucking spike bat and a fucking whatever, and I'm sitting at home nailing fucking nails through a bat for her, and <laughs> she hasn't even picked the fucking thing up. You know, I'm like, oh, I guess she probably didn't need it. You know. <laughs> my cousin and my fucking aunts and uncles and everybody's buying guns and whatever i'm like oh you motherfuckers don't need a gun i'll tell you that these people <laughs> last thing they'll probably shoot them fucking self before they shoot someone else so. yeah i know gun sales went really high when this all happened yeah it's a, i don't know man it's just, it's a crazy again it's a crazy world we're living in who would have ever thought you know 2020 beginning of 2020 we're fucking hanging out, yeah, we're making yeah. fucking graffiti videos, we're having the time of our yeah. fucking lives. Within a week, yeah. fucking everything changes. Now you're staying at home eating fucking fig newtons and watching <laughs> Netflix and shit for the next fucking three months or whatever. Like, God damn it. Yeah. While Bat does rollers. <laughs> All I'm doing at home is like, it, it's like, 
I, for me, it's like graffiti. I can only liken it to like needing to get laid. Like for me, after a while, I become like very irritated, and it, like you can't like watch porn, like going on Instagram or whatever. Like look at what everybody else is doing. God damn it! I need to fucking paint something, and like you can't like jerk that off and fucking like get any release. Like you gotta go paint something and get that out of your system. So. I'm like fucking biting my nails. I'm like drawing on everything and just nothing. There's nothing gives you the feeling of bombing, but bombing. And if I, if I can bomb then I'm not the same person, I'm a nasty, you know, I'm a nasty individual. And I, I don't like who I am when I, you know, that's me being like a brat pretty much. Like I want to bomb. Is that why you write graffiti? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think in the beginning why I started to write graffiti was it was just kind of like an outlet for me. I always painted and, and drew and, and all these things. And then there was like, I had noticed it. I skated and all the fucking like the gangsters where I grew up in like Southern California. So, you know, there was skaters, taggers, gangsters, basically, and, and then surfers. And uh, I didn't fuck with the surfers because most of them were racist. And, you know, like a lot of the taggers and the, you know, the gangsters were Mexican or, or African American, so, or Latin American, whatever. And uh, I fucked with them. Like, we all got along really well because I grew up in Jersey City. So when I got to California, the surfers were like, hey, some white guy, hey, check this out. I'm like, I oh, don't fuck. You guys can go catch a wave. Like, I'm hanging out with these people over here. So I skated. And then I noticed that, like, the gangsters fucking hated skaters. But they also hated the taggers. So we kind of banded together. You know, we had like our thing where like, if you write and you fucking skate, like we're cool. And it just kind of eventually meshed into, you know, one thing where we skated and we, we fucking tagged on shit. And from there, went to piecing and just doing way too many colors and these letters that nobody could read. And it's, you know, trying to get some spot that's crazy as fuck with like a million color burner. And it was just too much. I wasn't happy, you know what I mean? And and nothing like, people would see like the people I painted with, they would read all their names and they would be like, oh, and then there's what's the whatever that is. And I was always the whatever that is guy. And then one day I started doing this bat and it was kind of like, it started out as like a joke a little bit, but it wasn't. And uh, it just stuck and people fucking like caught, like it, it just caught so fast. And I was like, wow. like. But I also had friends who told me I was not allowed to do that. Like, you can do all these things and you're a great artist and you should be doing this and whatever. And it, I had this, like, clash of, uh, yeah, I should be painting burners and fucking, you know, whatever. But fuck that. I, I'm not happy doing yeah, that. Yeah, you ended up doing what you wanted. I just yeah. did what I wanted to do. Eventually, it took me, like, for five years of my life, I wrote just, I had gotten into this crew from my hometown called PTS. And when I got in, I literally, I changed my name to PTS. Like all I did was just crew reps for five years straight. And then afterwards I, you know, I kind of took the crew over and I was like, I've done enough. Like it's time to do me now. So, you know, probably about 2010, I just started just going hard with bringing the bat back. Yeah. I had done it early 2000s and then it faded out for a minute. And then 2010, I brought it back and just the more I did it, the more I loved it and the more, you know, the happier I was and uh you know here I am today so yeah it has a very unique style when um even when your letters they just they just look very you know I don't know how to explain it like bat you know it's just it just flows it's like hardcore I, I try to make like I, I notice like a lot of graffiti doesn't have any personality you know what I mean and, yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying it's like boring mm -hmm. and graffiti is what it is like yeah. maybe what I do isn't even graffiti like I'm just you know, I'm vandalizing property with some f shitty ass f fucking bat face. And I don't, I don't care. Like quality really like do more care less is yeah. kind of the motto. Like, I'm just going to do this. If it comes out like shit, people are going to know what it was, you know, and then I'm going to move on. Yeah. I don't really beat myself up too much about it. So. Yeah. You're speaking of personality. Um, you're known for a lot of rowdy character is a lot of anti fucking government and gg like, allen challenge yeah yeah <laughs> that shit is ridiculous yeah. <laughs> that, 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 uh, honestly yeah, what's the story with that one i had just gotten out of like a nine-year relationship i was almost married and uh but let me just say yeah, yeah describe what that, happened because yeah. a lot of people might not know what that is 
So I went on YouTube before you got here just to, you know, do some homework. And I just type in bad graffiti, see uh, some video by tags and throws, right? Yeah. So I click on it and the screen is just, you know, I think black and white, a regular wall. And then crazy dude, na like you pull up naked on the screen. You run onto the screen, onto the wall. You got your ball sack hanging out. And I'm like, what? this is not what I expected, especially, you know, you don't watch graffiti video, how often do you see that? So that's what the GG Allen challenge was. Basically, the tags and throws guys who are super cool dudes, uh, you know, I was sending them pictures, whatever else. And they're like, we really want you to make a video, like come to New York and make a video. And I just, I couldn't make it out to New York. And so they're producing these videos and I'm seeing it. I'm seeing Zexer, OJ, yeah, Nims, and all, that. all these guys and, you know, great, great videos. But, you know, me and Ola are talking about it, and I'm like, if I'm going to make a video, like, I'm not going to make a video that's the same old fucking run-of-the-mill. And not to take away from those guys' videos, because they're great, especially the Zexer video is a fucking amazing graffiti video. Like, he did, a, he did an amazing yeah, job. That was he, iconic. Everyone who did them, you know, did a great job. But for me, it was just going to be like, that's just not me. Like... I need to do something else. What am I going to do? Yeah, to show who you are. Exactly. Yeah. And just, or just to yeah. literally like yeah. Your show Your mindset on things pretty much, yeah. Like, fuck. So you know what I did? I took my <laughs> pants off. No. <laughs> There's one with like, You're so there was around. that and Ola is filming me through this and he's cracking up the entire fucking time. And it, <laughs> to, to actually like send that out to, yeah, to yeah. someone and have it be put on that that actually was like should i actually send this <laughs> so we had made five videos to send to them they only posted two one of them was the fire video where we were literally like setting things on fire and the guy was like he's like you're gonna get arson charges for this like this is bad <laughs> so we couldn't that one and i wish i still had that footage because it was amazing but you know so then the ones that he picked was the bondage one and the and the the fucking G.G. Allen challenge. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't care. Honestly, I would have never thought... I did it because I don't give a fuck. But it turned out to be like this. It turned me into like a sex symbol, essentially. And I didn't, I didn't do it for that. But the response that I got back from it was like, oh my God, he's so secure. And, that. and I was like, if they only knew like how insecure I was about this, like... But you know, I obviously like watching it, I'm like, oh, the editing and everything was just so bad. And it was just like, oh, what do I care? You know, this, if anything, like I shouldn't give a fuck. So I don't give a fuck. And I ended up fucking like, <laughs> long story short, I got laid a lot of times for doing it. You know, and it was all about like, oh my God, he's so secure. And I'm just like another one. Like, this is, that's not why I did that, but I'll take it, you know? like. A, I'm not gonna complain, you know. So I don't know. Either way, if could I, if I could go back, would I take it down or would I not do it? No. Do I like talking about it? You know. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. You know, it's part of my history, I guess. So when I die or whatever the fuck, people are gonna be like, well, we can still look at his ass and you know whatever else. And, I got accused of being gay. I got accused of... There are a lot of people outed themselves as being homophobes and shit in the comments on those videos. And, and there was a lot of controversy. And that was kind of where, like, the beginning of, like, the major controversy of me and Ola came from. So now it's like everything I do is controversial. I think if you do something slightly out of the norm, it's right away controversial. So if you're doing that really out of the norm, you know, I can only imagine what the fuck people are saying. The other crazy thing about that is then all of a sudden people are sending me videos of them painting naked. <laughs> and I'm like, this wasn't a challenge for yeah, you. Yeah, this like is you a challenge understand. for me. Like, I, I, I never, I never meant that as like a challenge for society. So like, here's a bunch of dudes naked fucking painting on shit. I'm like, this is what I get. This is what, you know, this is what I deserve for doing this. Like I didn't, a lot of, th I didn't think about a lot of the recourse that I was going to get from this. So it, was, yeah, it is what it is. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you is your thoughts on religion. Uh, Are you anti-religion? Uh, I don't care. They believe whatever you want, but don't expect for me to like fucking, you know, if you're pushing Bible or pushing whatever, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to fucking agree with you or whatever. But uh, did you grow up? Religious? My parents were Catholic and got beat by nuns and priests and shit, so they fucking, they refused. I, I mean, the only time I went to church as a kid, this is fucking crazy, true story. My fucking uncle had us for the weekend, and my cousins, they all went to catechism and all this shit. 
So we go for the weekend with my fucking cousin and my uncle takes us to church. And we don't know what the fuck's going on. I've never been to church a day in my life. I was probably like six or seven, maybe eight years old. And my cousin's going up to receive uh, confirmation. And my uncle's like, go with him. Go on up there. And so we go up and we eat the fucking wafer and we drink the thing. And I never went to catechism. I mean, uh, I never did any of that shit. So we get home and my parents ask us what we had done for the weekend. Oh, we went to church and we ate this little wafer and drank this fucking thing. They're like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> that's... Like, you know, that's a huge sin or whatever the fuck else. I don't, honestly, I don't even think I'm baptized. I honestly don't think I'm even baptized. I don't, I don't really have anybody to ask that would know. But again, like, I don't care. Believe in whatever you want to believe in, man. If it helps you sleep better at night, go ahead. But for me, like, nah, no religion, no thank you. What about street art? I know you're not a big fan. Street art, oh my God. I mean... My real question that I would like the because I know it's a it's a thing in graph to not like street art is uh just the general and actual reason why you know like why do I do it no 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 like uh why does collectively as a whole the scene of graffiti writers hate street art uh, I mean it's not for me almost it just started out as like wow what a great background for bombing you know what I mean and then. I started to realize like more and more because I, street art wasn't, I don't know, I guess from like early 2000s to now, street art has made some pretty big strides in society. So you go from like a city that won't have graffiti, they like over enforce and buff shit. And then all of a sudden you're driving by one day and there's this fucking shitty, stupid mural, thoughtless mural. And all, it was just years and decades of bombing and, and people would hit the spot and you, you know as a kid you grew up and you saw it and now there's this goofy fucking mural there guess what graffiti's making a comeback and we're gonna take our fucking spot back and so it basically became like revenge for fucking going over some yeah, yeah like yeah no this property is still claimed by the fucking the, the real motherfuckers yeah and, and it's gonna stay like that and if you don't like it Tough shit. And the, the thing about it is, too, is a lot of these guys bitch and complain, but then those companies or wherever their buildings, they call these people back and pay them again to fix it. You know what I mean? Like, they got paid or they got hooked up. And it's... Creating jobs in a way. Exactly. Like if, you in, are. There's in, no way around it. In the end, like, why complain? Like, you, you know, if you're so into fucking street art, you should be happy to go fucking fix the goddamn thing. I, gotta, I don't have to go fix a bomb when someone goes and disses it. And a lot of times I don't. But if I make the choice to do it, like, that means I like that. And if someone comes and does it again, maybe I'll fix it again. And also you're risking a lot of things. You know what I mean? I'm they're not, they're not risking ass. shit. They could paint all day in the sun and nobody bats an eye, you know? And it's always, like, just dumb. I, I rarely see, like, street art where I'm like, okay, this is acceptable. Like, I, I like this one. No, I never like it. Like, I, I never see anything that I'm just like, wow, cool. I don't care what it is. Like, nah, fuck all that shit. The one thing that I kind of am on the fence about is wheat pastes. Because, like, think about this. Like, cost and revs. Like, was that street art when they were out really doing that shit? And Consider now, a graph. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, they're promoting their they name. Are, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, they're promoting their name. Yeah. They're putting shit up. And then there's, like, Obey comes out. And he's got this, this character. And he's doing that. And then it's... That's like, this is where the bridge for wheat paste starts getting built towards street art. Because... Like, what do you think about Love Me? What, the roller tags or whatever? He does, uh, he does, like, I'm pretty sure he's done wheat pasting before, but it's kind of, you know, the, it's in between street art and graffiti. Right, I see, there's, like, a lot of, like, just random, like, roller tags he's and done shit some, like that. Some, he's definitely done some graph. Oh, yeah, there's some, some, big stuff. there's some spots where I'm just like, I don't know how this motherfucker did that. And will I cover that? No, I, I would leave it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to fill in over somebody's roller tags, really, but if it's a bunch of fucking hearts and lips and fucking whatever. Well, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, you write love, love me a million times in cursive and it's all rainbow. Well, nothing against rainbows, but you know, Hey, Phil's over that. So, and uh, you know, the other thing is, is I would say like nine times out of 10, it's, it's dudes that write who are doing this fucking street art shit and or they're you know have written yeah what are exactly and it's, then you know it takes a certain mindset to go out there and do this outside you know what i mean to write on a surface or put something up on a surface so know? maybe you're like some old school graffiti writer and now you've retired and you want to do street art and you know again like 
all right, that should be recognized. I guess you put in your work and you should have your fucking, you know, your moment out there to do what you like. But then again, like... Yeah, don't expect that shit to last. Yeah. It's, uh, someone's going to do it. Someone's going to do it. I've made, you know, again, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've gone over shit that I didn't realize what it was. And, you know, it, that... If I never went over street art, I wouldn't have a lot of the problems that I have today. You know what I mean? But am I going to stop? No. Because one way or the other, bombing... There's going to be a problem one way or the other. Someone's going to find something to complain about. So. Yeah. Sp speaking about um, people who have written and then they go on to doing, I guess, uh, different kinds of art, but it's based on their graffiti. Would you ever see yourself doing something like that? No. Never, ever? No. I'm good. I don't... It's... The closest I get is to drawing, you know, and, and maybe selling shit that I draw. And, and aside from that, it's... I've had plenty of people... I've had, like, a fucking famous person I won't, I won't throw his name out there come paint my house and whatever and you know he's got fucking like revoking rhyme in there or whatever and it's like an art gallery of graffiti in this dude's home no <laughs> fuck that you know what i mean like what even for money or whatever like that's not what i'm doing i'm not that's not paint does not come out with me into society unless i'm going to do something fucked up i'm not cruising over to your house to paint and fucking chill on your couch and fucking you know what I mean like no I don't I'm not painting your girlfriend's room I'm not fucking you know what I mean like I don't you can buy some art and hang that shit up if you want and or maybe I'll even hook you up you know what I mean who knows but no that's not doesn't belong in your in your fucking house you so you, I mean? you do you not do you look uh I don't know how to say this without I don't want to you know put you on the spot make you insult anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't think it's cool when, when other writers do that, even if they've put in their time? I'm not the judge of what other people do. In, in my opinion, everybody's free to do what they want. For me, I'm not going to do it. If they want to go do it, more power to them. And they, they made the money, and I'm not here to judge them. You know, as far as I'm concerned, fucking more power to you. This is, that makes it so that these people don't call me up and fucking ask me to do silly shit in their house. So. You ever paint high, drunk? For a long, long time. For a long, long time. I've, I've been sober for over three years now. And, uh, like, again, you were talking about painting alone. Like, when you're drunk and you're painting alone, good yeah, luck. You need something to take the edge off. Yeah, for you're sure. fucking high yeah. and you're painting alone, good luck. You know, you can probably end up in jail. You wake up in jail, <laughs> like, how did I get here? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so now it's like, I'm on, on I'm point. On right? point. Yeah, yeah. On point. I fucking sleep very well before I go out. I, I make sure, like, you know, I fucking zen out before I come do this shit, and uh, I make sure to eat my Wheaties in case I gotta run. And whatever. take it very serious. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I try to operate as professionally as possible. You know, and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people who would be bummed if I if I got locked up. You know, I know my girlfriend wouldn't be too fucking happy about that. So. So sober for three years, you said. Over three years now, yeah. Over three years. Yep. What made you go? Come, what is what is sober first of all? Uh. For me, like, Ola was, uh, Ola had gone to prison for a while, and when he got out, he had gotten sober, like, just straight edge completely, like, nothing, you know, and, uh, he, you know, he had a serious drug issue, uh, so he was, he was sober for about, I guess, five years, and, you know, hanging out with him all the time, I'm fucking smoking a, a blunt with fucking, you know, I'm smoking, like, a $40 blunt with the craziest weed and, you know, oil and all the shit in it. And uh, maybe I have a bad day at work and I eat a Xanax or two and then I'm blacking out and drinking a Jack and Coke. And, you know, I started to realize, like, after a while, like, everyone around me is sober and I'm the only guy who gets super fucked up. And it's like a show for them. Like, oh, let's watch the bat get fucking wasted tonight and do something wild. And, yeah, I'm sure, like, the, the memories of that are hilarious, but really not for me, you know what I mean? It's more for them, so it's kind of like, oh, well, I guess I might have missed the bus. Like, I don't really like this anymore either. Like, what what am I doing? I don't really, I smoke so much pot that I don't even get high anymore, you know what I mean? I drink when I feel like it, but when I drink, I don't, like, just have a beer. I get shit-faced and I fucking fight a bum, or I... You know what I mean? Like, I'll climb something and I can't get down. And uh, I'm like, how the f you know, I hurt myself. I've done a lot of dumb shit. So it's just, that's like my mantra is like a fucking drunk and a person who's high. Like, something dumb is going to happen. So 
since that has ended, you know, I have still done some dumb shit, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as, you know, I probably would have been in prison or, or dead or, you know. I think a lot of people as they get older, because we had a few other guests on here, Charlie the Hustler, Vintage Sponsor, they also, as they went on through life, they realized that being sober is the way to go, you know what I mean? I think a lot of people are waking up to that, seeing how, yeah, the stories are cool and you have a lot of fun and shit, but you look back, it's, you know what I mean? What did you get out of that? You know, it's... You know, chalk it up to experience, I guess, but at the same time, yeah, of course, like, yeah. I can't have, I can't take that time back, you know? Yeah, what no, I mean? no, like, of course, you can only learn from it. Yep, yeah. exactly. So, just lesson learned, kind of, and... Yeah. Trying to live a little bit healthier. I still have my vices, but I don't fucking. So you I don't, don't drink, drink at all. Don't smoke at I all. Do not drink. I do not smoke weed or whatever else. I don't fucking sniff meth or fucking do coke or whatever else. Eat a Xanax. Drink lean. I think at one point we were putting like, we were breaking up Xanax and putting it in lean and fucking. I think I smoked like 15 blunts in a course of a day, and we're drinking lean with Xanax and fucking weed gummy bears in it and. Uh, fucking drinking Hennessy and Coke and like this is one day this is just one day and I woke up and my fucking kidneys were I was like why does my back hurt like this I can't understand it clicked like oh my kidneys okay no this is no good like you know that means I don't got much time left if my kidneys are going out so I gotta chill out with this so I started to work out I started to fucking eat healthy and you know drink lots of water and you know three years later I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot better, you know, do I, now I think my vice is like fast food, which isn't good, but you know, it's, yeah, 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 one day I'll, occasionally, you know, I fluctuate, sometimes I eat healthier than, than others, but I still have that in me where I'm like, you deserve this, you deserve a, a Popeye's chicken sandwich, a papaya dog, a fucking, God knows what we were eating at Rutt's Hut, this place in New Jersey, and they fucking dip the burger in gravy. And I'm like, yeah, dip my burger in gravy, yeah. fucking, oh, like, <laughs> you know. So that's like, I still have that poison yeah. thought in my head where like, you've been a good boy, you deserve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a while. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, it's in there. The addictive personality is still there. It's not that it's not there. It's just, it's, it's found a different focal point, so. It's really cool how you could use, you know, cleaning up, yourself into transitioning it into graffiti how you're more on point you know what i mean uh, like you said people they go out there and they pretty much bound to get locked up because they're not their senses aren't on point you know they like, they're not on, they don't know what's going around around to them you know what i mean they Cause with graffiti comes a whole bunch of stuff yeah it isn't painting on a wall you start yeah. stealing start for, you start stealing paint then you realize you can actually steal your groceries you can steal yeah. your, your all your clothes you can steal things and sell them to pay rent and then you can start doing that while you're high. Oh, yeah. And then before you know it, you're just a total pile of doing God knows what. Yeah, you're funding you're funding an addiction basically. And I've I've done all that too. You know what I mean? I've I've definitely I've just stolen so much in this lifetime. To the point where it was like a challenge to steal more than the next person. And that's even something else like where do I still steal? Yeah, of course I steal. But do I steal at, a, at the magnitude that I was stealing? Well, what was the no. magnitude? Explain. Like, uh, I, I feel like when I was really young, we had this thing where, you know, it was like you, you get a card of paint and that's your card of paint. Like, we would share a little bit, you know what I mean? But for me, like, I could go through a fucking card of paint in a week maybe, you know what I mean? I'd, I'd be done. So we had brought some friends up from L.A. to the town we lived in, which was easier to steal in. And, you know, these guys from L.A. are professional thieves as far as I'm concerned. We get into this place. I push a fucking card out. The dude from L.A. comes walking out. He's got nothing. And I'm like, what the fuck happened, man? You, you had it. He's like, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. No, I want to go. And I'm like, fuck that. And I walked back in and I pushed his fucking card out, too. So I ended up with, like, you know, we stole a lot of fucking paint that day. That was fucking 600 cans of fucking paint. Like, a lot of, a lot of paint. And the deal was, is like, if I push it out, I fucking use it. You know, I mean, I'll give you some, but I risk my ass. So, you know, we're buddies and all, but you, you bitched up. I'm fucking taking this. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the thing is it got to the point where, where I lived, we kind of had like a little commune and I stole all the food. I stole all the paint. I stole all the fucking, anything you think of, I stole it. And, years and years go by and you're like, dude, I've been supporting a fucking crew of people for what like nobody does shit so it's 
you know, after a while, I'm like, okay, well, I should probably get a job. And once I got the job, everyone's, you know, you see your buddies start falling off. You know, people don't want to hang out anymore because you're not fucking funding them, you know what I mean, through your thievery. So that's, that's, that was a big eye opener for me too, is like maybe st I was just stealing because like I knew I could do it and I like helping people kind of, but that doesn't mean I should do that. You know what I mean? Like I gotta take care of myself. Yeah, kind of weed, weeds adult. out like who your true friends are and you, oh, got, yeah. you got to see what people really f like, you know? Who doesn't want a free ride? You know yeah, what I mean? Of for me, I'm just, I, I'm different. You know what I mean? Like I don't mind helping people out, but then it, it could be taken advantage of and you gotta, you gotta know when you're being taken advantage of. Yeah, that's so you don't you don't steal anymore on that I, magnitude. Yeah, I, I you know, again like, am I pushing carts out? Sure, but am I doing it every week? No. Am I doing it every month? No. Do it every couple months? Yeah, and I make it so that I can stretch things out. What about outside of graph, clothes, oh, food? Man, I always like I, I'm still like, I struggle with the kleptomania of taking things that like I didn't really want. You know what I mean? Like, you see something, and you're like, oh, that's got no tag on it? Like, fuck it, I'm just going to grab it. And then you get it home, and you're like, I don't want this. Like, what, does anyone want this? Like, why did I steal this? So that kind of shit I still do, where I'm just like, oh, this hat has no fucking, you know, tag on it. And then nobody wants it, and I end up, like, trying to sell it on eBay or something. You know what I mean? And maybe I make a little money off it, maybe I don't. But yeah, that reminds me of that video of uh, Ear Snod and Nemo. Yep, Rest in peace. He was like, I got this abundance of shoes I don't even want. You know, it's like, yeah, it, it just <laughs> happens. a cardboard cutout. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's just part of the deal. Like, I feel like when I'm doing, when I'm, like, bombing, I have to check myself because I get the, I get the bug, you know, like the gambling bug. Like, I want to roll, and I... Everything's going great. And I gotta keep going and more, 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 more. And you know, there, there has to be like a little voice in your head that has to be like, "Easy, mad dog. Like, take a fucking look around. You know, slow it down." And with the stealing, that's kind of the, the same thing. We're like, "Oh, I got all this, and now I'm gonna go get more, and, and, and then I'll have so much that I won't need anything for a long time." <laughs> you know, and that's that's basically okay. Easy. You know, you got enough. Like, do you even have time to use this shit? No. So fucking calm down and go get more when you need it. You know, and that's, I don't know. You have a quick rap for an extended period of time? Only when I went to jail. And even then, I'm carving in the fucking bunk, you know, <laughs> fucking all this shit. How long were you in jail for? Uh, I've done little stints here and there, six months, almost a year, whatever. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, I, I did a little bit more time than that. Uh, but as an adult, it's luckily been fairly brief but then you know house arrest there's been house arrest so you're stuck on house arrest and i think the house arrest was the the longest i went without painting and that was definitely that was difficult that sucked because you I went to jail cool. for graffiti i've yeah i've never been to jail for anything else if i if i never did graffiti i probably would have never seen the inside of a jail cell it's crazy to think about that was on the west coast right yeah, both, both coasts. Because I know in New York, it's not that easy to be actually incarcerated. I know you'll go to the holding cell, but I know a lot of people have been caught and then nothing happens. They'll get caught two or three times and nothing happens. They don't even have a record, so. Yeah, they, they, it's it just depends, I guess. Like, if they really want you, you know, you're obviously, you know, you're going to go. You make the fucking newspaper or something. Yeah, it depends what you hit also, right, right. you know what I mean? You know, you yeah. see somebody like Dessa who makes it in the fucking paper again. And, yeah, you know, they, they pretty much make examples almost out of people that hit, you know, serious shit like trains and all that stuff. You know? Yeah, the trains, like, again, I don't really have any urge to fucking hit a subway train. I, I will eventually get around to it, but that's not, I mean, something that's just going to go so fast, like, just for the nostalgia of it. I feel like you have to, yeah. yeah like, I just... And, like, think about, like, all the cool shit there is in the subway. All the fucking, like, the history that's down there around the trains. Like, look at all the shit that's gonna run. And then you could just paint this train and it'll be gone the next day and all you got was maybe a picture. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's for people that, like, romanticize that era, you know? They, they still want to hit that. Imagine that, too. Like, imagine being, like, one of these dudes. Like, Scheme for instance, is, is real fucking cool. I talk to Scheme all the time. And, and the uh, risk is very high. His style just gets fucking vampirized. Like, people are just like, oh, Scheme, like, let me draw that, but my name, you know? And it's like, <laughs> imagine that. Like, I guess, and then that's the greatest form of flattery, I guess, is, you know, yeah, I mean, but at the same time, like, what about just, 
let these people have what they had, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Let, them, let them keep their memories and, and of course, that, yeah. that time and don't try to be that. Be like, you know, it's fucking 2020, yeah. man. Keep up with the times, you know what I mean? Exactly, no you know what yeah. I mean? You wasn't there. <laughs> you really wasn't there, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> your fucking dad wasn't even there, you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So, I, I don't know, I, I kind of get, you see a lot of these styles and like, again, like, I'm not trying to hate, but just don't be afraid to, like, sometimes it's better to just be yourself. Like, maybe it's better to run around naked and fucking get slapped and draw shitty stuff and just be me than trying to fit in and fucking, you either blend in or you stand out. So, uh, uh, fucking, I'd rather stand out. That's why the graph game needs people like you, man, to show, like I said before, the kids that what they can really do out there, that they can be original and creative. They don't have to do the same thing everyone's doing, you know. And it's, again, like, it's kind of... Like, you create your own quality. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to live up to anyone's fucking standard. Like, what? Just because everyone likes super fucking clean graffiti, like, yeah, fine. I, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's nice. You When your graffiti looks fucking proper, it is what it is. But not everything has to be like that. You know, like, real shit, like, you might not finish your fill, and you might have to dip, or you might not finish your outline. And... Sometimes that's fucking cooler than seeing the finished product. You know, like, there's, yeah. there's a story there. You're like, oh, yeah, shit, yeah. this guy had to run, you know? Like, maybe he got booked. I'd almost rather see that sometimes than, like, just this perfect little mm -hmm. wrapped-up package with a bow yeah. on it, and it's like, yay! <laughs> yeah. and I don't, it's too fun and happy for me. Like, I just want to see something that's just like, oh, this guy doesn't give a fuck. Like, this is grimy and shitty, and you know he's better than that, but he's just... It has, it has life to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, like, that's... I almost rather see, like... I know you guys probably seen, like, Jim Joe and shit like that. Like, just a crude fucking tag. But at the same time, it's just, like... It's Jim Joe. Like, it's 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 thing. You know what I mean? And for me, I like, I like seeing shit like that. You know what I mean? I like the characters in graffiti. I feel like it can't always just be letters. And... Yes, I do love drawing letters, and yes, I understand that's what graffiti is really all about. But think about like the characters too. Like a lot of characters have brought a lot of, uh, you know, some people's shit wouldn't look the same without it. And who would I be now if I didn't like grow up loving graffiti characters? You know what I mean? So it's for me, I think some things just need a little bit more personality. And and when someone's willing to to do that, then more power to them. You know, fucking have fun with. What do you think makes you happy outside of graph? What do you think is important to be happy in you as Bat? Just in general, in general life. Your girlfriend? Yeah, having sex with my girlfriend is fucking amazing. I, I've been single for too long, man. Fuck, I was like, there's only so much porn you can watch. Before, <laughs> before my girlfriend, it was obviously masturbation, but shit, you know? And then fast food. So fast food, sex. Uh, actually, my girlfriend's actually pretty... She's genuinely a fucking really cool person, and, and uh, it's hard to find someone that's got, like, a really cool personality. So she she gives me, like, a run for my money, you know. She's she's not afraid to fuck with me, you know, and I, I dig that shit. I like being kept on my toes and, you know, having, like, a partner in crime like that. It, it's really cool, so I dig that. And, you know, my, my friends, too. Obviously, I can't leave that out. Like, without the people who I've, who I've met and, uh, you know, come up with along the way, like, that's kind of what keeps me going, too. Like, I get stoked to see a new fucking Rebo. I get stoked to see, you know, LNE crew doing their thing. I get stoked to see a new Ola anytime Ola's, like, sending me some shit. He doesn't post a lot of shit on the internet, but he'll send it to me. And, you know, he's always got a crazy story. And that keeps me pumped. Like, that makes me happy. Like, oh, yeah, Ola's stepped in bum shit with his brand new Nikes. Like, that made, you know, I laugh about it for hours. And, like, that, you know, it's a sad story and all, but... You know, hey. It's outside the, the normal zombies walking on the street. You know exactly. What I mean? life. Exactly. Because work is yeah. fucking just... I go there and I just tune out and I fucking... I get fucked with by fucking MAGA hat wearing white trash and I just... It's just a nightmare. So graffiti is the, the yin and the yang. You know, it balances out that shit. You know? It really is. Like, after a while, like, I start to fucking, like... I start to become a monster. And, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't like who I am when I'm not painting. Like, I, honestly, like, I, it's hard to look in the mirror and be like, yeah, it's time to go. Like, you got to go. 
So I'm, that's why I'll never stop. Like, I, no matter what happens, no matter how much trouble I get in, or if I'm in a wheelchair, or whatever the case may be, I'll always be painting. I'll always be doing something. I covered everything I wanted to say. Um, it's been an hour. If you got anything else to say, you got any last shout outs? Shout out to anything you want to say or whatever. I mean, shout out to you guys. Best of luck on your new venture, this podcast. I mean, I'm really happy you guys had me come out. You've done a great job so far with the other interviews. You know, Thank and, you so uh, much. Man. Thank you, man. Yeah, no, it was, again, good to see something new and different. You know what I mean? You guys got kind of like a broad spectrum of people you're bringing on here. Yeah, man, we're trying to cover different aspects of life, not only graffiti, just trying to venture out, see what people are about, man. Like, like we just said, it's all about showing that there's life out there, just showing... You know, this fucking inter this world is interesting. It doesn't all have to be fucking routine jobs, you know, nine to fives. Like, we want to know what people are about, what their passion is, they're genuine. We want to fucking see the truth behind, you know, what's going on. You can learn something from everyone. So even yeah. if you, your only hobby is playing chess, you listen to Bat Talk, you learn <laughs> something that you, you never knew before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, I commend you guys for being brave enough to try. A lot of people do a lot of talking about Dude. I'm gonna start a fucking podcast, Yo. but to sit out and, and do it and fucking this is a lot of work, you know what I mean? So, you know, you guys give yourself a pat on the back and keep doing what you're doing. And shout out to, you know, shout out to everybody who shows love as usual. Shout out to fucking everyone, Stay Ugly Crew, VTO, PTS, all my fucking boys out there. Shout out to everybody from LNE, especially uh, Rebo. Thanks for putting me into the All We Got Is Us movie, which came out great. It was a fucking uh, amazing film. And aside from that, you know, just, you know, happy to not have fucking COVID-19, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming out on short notice, man. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me, guys.